Welcome to Grazing Hell, the one and only podcast made by a cow. And today I've got a very special guest, Madison Brown. Woo! Welcome. Welcome to the pod. How are you on this fine day? I'm great. I'm feeling very productive and energized, um, which is really nice because I had a really rough sleep last night. I don't know, I've been feeling like I've had a lot of like back pain. This is like so like <laughs> Yeah, random, no, tell us, tell us. Yeah, I'm just like my body is really turning against me right now. So I was like, I don't know how today's gonna go, but then I like took a shower and everything and now I feel feel like a new woman. So <laughs> good. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, I mean I feel you with regards to the back pain. Um I I, I don't know if it's just like once you hit, I don't know, twenty one or something, you get back pain, but it's like as as you get older your body just starts to fall apart doesn't it? giving up yeah it, it, it's already giving up and I'm not even 30 yet it's like come on right I'm like why am I waking up with my knees aching like yeah am I 80? exactly exactly oh but yeah um so in case people aren't familiar with your work do you want to tell us a bit about what you do who you are yes okay so I make commentary videos um it's kind of weird because my videos are kind of going through a bit of a transition right now Mm. but I started off doing social commentary so talking about like Instagram and like plastic Mm -hmm. surgery cultural appropriation all that fun internet (laughs) stuff Um, but now I'm kind of focusing more on music and pop culture and entertainment why do you think you've made that shift if you don't mind me asking yeah, um, a few reasons. One of them being, like, I just couldn't really handle doing social commentary anymore. Like, if anyone who follows me, they know that I'm very opinionated and I'm not afraid to say what I think. Mm. And that's been really helpful for my channel. And I think it was much needed because I noticed that a lot of commentary channels, they all kind of say the same thing because mm. they want to be, like, I guess, PC or whatever, not, like, hurt anyone's feelings or get hate comments which I totally get but I felt like you know maybe it's time for people to be a bit more honest um however as my channel started to grow it seemed to backfire on me a bit and as a black woman especially like when you give your opinion on the internet people really hate it so Mm. I was kind of just like you know what this is not really helping me and I think I need to do something else also I've like said everything I've needed to say when it comes to things like that and I didn't really feel passionate about certain topics anymore like yeah I just it gets kind of draining when you're constantly thinking about like the downfalls of society and you're just like okay everyone is being really intense to me and also I'm tired of thinking about this stuff all the time and I just need to do something else Yeah, well, exactly. Um, As someone who does social commentary themselves, I can tell you 1000% that is my process. I am always preempting criticism. I'm always making disclaimers. I'm terrified of saying the wrong thing and hurting people's feelings. And and I would be lying if I said I wasn't afraid of getting cancelled. Like, I know that's a very self-serving thing to say. Aren't we all? (laughs) Yeah, I'm terrified. I'm absolutely terrified of that honestly it's um so I absolutely feel you and I think I if if you feel as if you're not going to be yourself and not be honest you know that's like a really draining thing it's um and I do every now and then feel like that where I'm like oh am I gonna say everything I think or am I gonna hold back a bit and naturally you do just because you know as you say, it's kind of the atmosphere is very, it's scary. It's scary. Commentary YouTube could be quite scary. It's, 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 it's the thing as well. I think a lot of like internet discourse gets just very quickly, very heated. Like there was this video you made that I, I loved. It was like, um, stop pitting women against each other or something like that. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. That, uh, picture of Kendall Jenner next to an astronaut. Yes, exactly. And um, do you want to just tell tell the people what the premise of it is in case they haven't seen it? And then we'll... Yeah, that was a, kind of a reaction video in, in a way to this post that I saw on Instagram where uh, I'm assuming it was a woman. I think it was. She was saying, you know, 
people like Kendall Jenner are celebrated for, you know, their bodies and like their beauty and things like that. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes people like Kendall Jenner take the spotlight away from women who do other things like, you know, astronauts or like scientists or something like that. And a lot of people are like, you're pitting women against each other and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't really think that was her message. I think she was just trying to say like, we should also shine light on women who are doing things other than being beautiful. Because I mean, the whole point of feminism and, and you know, standing up for women is to show that we're more than just our bodies. We're more than just what we look like. And I think that's something that we should talk about more and we should showcase those women as well. I'm not saying that Kendall Jenner isn't I don't even know what what are, what are they trying to say Kendall Jenner isn't what like there's really no like, yes and exactly exactly and it's funny because I, I remember commenting on that video that a I think had I seen something like that that would have been my first thought because like we all have our knee-jerk reactions and I think that's a mess that's kind of a lesson to say maybe just take a breath and listen to what a person is saying before you get really angry and b I sort of said you know as you were saying it's um, being a model is success and that's like awesome but when you're an astronaut as a woman in a way it's like you've had to overcome more because it's harder to become an astronaut as a woman than it is to become right. a model because like uh, you know being an astronaut it's like a more male dominated industry and that's not to say one is more valuable than the other it's just to say that you know you have to overcome more it's like women in STEM yeah. right like you know, my friends who did science degrees, like, had to contend with a lot more sexism than I did in my English degree, right? That doesn't mean that, like, their degree is better than mine. It's just, yeah, so they had to deal with more sexism. And someone commented, like, oh, how do you know that there are more male astronauts than women? And I was like, it's really not something hard to figure out <laughs> it's like uh, you are you really content are you really <laughs> contesting yeah. that but anyway <laughs> youtube comments are funny aren't they i mean yeah. yeah you used to cover tiktok more and i'm guessing you've taken a step away from that because that is even more hellish yeah i hate tiktok <laughs> i i post on there and every time i like regret it <laughs> right you um, still have it yeah, I do. Mm. Like my last TikTok, I had to delete because people were like, really just taking uh, the time out of their day to harass me for just like a silly TikTok. I'm like, why do you care so much? Like, I just I can't right now. But it was <laughs> just funny. like something dumb, and um, yeah, it's just like not to sound like one of those people, but you really like can't share your opinion without people getting personally upset to the point where they feel the need to harass you because I'm like you could have just scrolled past it and be like oh I don't really agree with that and yeah today, but or drop like, a dislike or whatever does TikTok yeah. have a dislike feature no I wonder I don't think it would but I wonder if that would help maybe probably not no. I was thinking people maybe love it, to comment yeah true comments are, and I suppose the people that are the most angry are the ones to comment right because if you're just yeah. like oh, I don't like it you'll scroll past whereas if you're like really irate of yes. course you're going to comment because you've gotten yourself in a right tizzy over it so yeah <laughs> but no exactly it's um yeah people yeah people are kind of terrifying and tiktok looks like a hellhole i, I don't want to go anywhere near it <laughs> my god yeah it's terrible <laughs> what was it? Who, do you watch mike's mic yeah so he i can't remember what but like People on TikTok got really angry with him about like, because he had like a hot take on, it was either like coffee or pasta. Okay, so the coffee gate, there's an audio. It's some, someone saying, wow, I knew I could get a rise out of you, but something, something obsessed with me. It's a, it's a joke. Like it's saying that the person that you're talking about is obsessed with the thing you're talking about. I was holding a regular sized coffee cup like Australian regular sized coffee cup. And the joke that I was trying to say is me talking to my American audience after they get mad at me for saying this is a regular sized coffee. That's That was the joke. It wasn't that good of a joke to start with. A regular sized coffee is a regular sized coffee, no matter where you bought it. That's part of the joke that I was trying to tell. No, TikTok said, absolutely fucking not. You are not getting away with this shit. People were just absolutely fucking coming for me. 
saying that I'm gatekeeping coffee. Remember, the only thing that I said was that regular sized coffee is a regular sized coffee. People just absolutely tearing people to shreds, like just coming in and kind of taking the point that I was trying to make and just absolutely going to town. Like someone said, exactly. That's the reason why the obesity rates are so high in the States is because everything's supersized. And I was like, oh, I don't know what, like, this is not the intention of the TikTok. What are you talking about? But people took it to be him making a jab at Americans and people brought like obesity into it. And it was like, he never mentioned (laughs) that. He was just talking about coffee. (laughs) And it was like the most bizarre. And it's like, if you've watched Mike's Mike, he's literally the most (laughs) uncontroversial. I know. He's like, so his his stuff is so silly and whimsical and just like (laughs) absurd. And it was just like, what? What? How have we got to this point that like, yeah. That is insane. Yeah, um, but yeah, exactly. The internet is kind of terrifying. So now that you've p- like changed a bit, what, so you're you're looking at more like cultural stuff. What kind of stuff are you sort of interested in now? Would you say? Um, so my last video, I talked about musicians who I think are talented, but I just can't really get into their music. Oh. For some reason. Um, and yeah, that yeah, did yeah, well. I saw that. Um, yeah. Before I did an Ariana Grande deep dive. And I'd love to do another deep dive, like just talk about a musician that I really love for like mm. an hour. Yeah. Because um, that's really fun. Um, and I think I'm probably going to do a video about musical legends and if they still exist. Because, you know, the way the music industry has changed, it, it's a bit harder to find people who are like, wow, they're going to be remembered forever for the music that they made. Whereas like, Back in the 80s, I mean, we had Madonna, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Prince, like those are all musical legends and they're all from like the same era. And we don't have as many artists like that today. But I still think there are some artists that I would consider like potential legends. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a, it does seem to be like more of a cycle in a way and like more saturation. And I don't know if that's like the internet and stuff, but y- yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Well, who do you think are potential legends? I feel like Ariana, right? You know, I actually talked about that in the Ariana Grande video yeah. I made at the end, because I do see that word thrown around a lot with her. And I said, you know, I don't think she is at that status yet, but I think she has potential to be there. Like, I mean, she's already so successful now and is so influential in music to think what her career will look like when she's like 40 and what she'll be doing then. I think she could definitely turn into that, but I don't think her music has necessarily changed the path of music as we know it. Whereas Mm. someone like, like Frank Ocean, I think he's a legend. I think. Yes. Love Frank Ocean. Though weirdly, even though Frank Ocean is, Obviously, he's really famous and really loved. I, I, I don't feel like he gets the same uh, exposure as someone like Ariana Grande. Do you know what I mean? He no. doesn't feel like a mainstream artist. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, even though like most people know who he is, he's just not talked about as much. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I what- think a lot of that has to do with the way that he portrays himself in the media or lack thereof, because he's extremely private. So oh. he's not like... Ariana Grande who's like posting on Twitter and interacting with her fans um because he's like you see him like once a year he drops an album like every four years so he kind of just his main focus like as an artist is truly his music like he's not doing anything else other than that um which I I kind of think contributes a bit to his like his legendary status I guess enigmatic yeah he's Mm. yes he's very mysterious and everything that he does is really focused on his music although he has like a jewelry line now but that's not really like it's not like a cash grab you know some celebrities they just kind of do whatever just they have a perfume right (laughs) they all have a perfume all of them have like three of ariana grande's perfumes (laughs) are they good 
they are they actually really are oh okay I remember all I remember is the uh Britney Spears one which came in like the pink but you know the one I'm talking about the brown pink bottle I think that was the only one I had of a celebrity maybe yeah when I was younger but yeah oh Britney let's talk about that tell us I think she's a legend for sure yeah she literally changed pop music like forever there's just no way to deny I mean there were pop stars before her but she like I feel like she invented like that like early 2000s 90s like super feminine like hyper hyper feminine like pop star that we know like I mean you, whenever you think pop star you think Britney Spears or you, you, li- yes. at least you think something around that like the the headset and like the sparkly yes. like outfits and the dancing like that is that's all Britney yeah that's true actually I think in a way she's not given in some ways she's given the credit but in other ways she isn't because I think sadly because of like everything that's happened to her she's not seen for her music first and foremost she's seen for her just unfortunate life experiences right um I read a really interesting YouTube comment and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it it was on um do you watch Mila Tequila yeah she makes those celebrity videos I love them okay so you know who I'm talking about on one of her videos someone commented Justin Timberlake is the villain in everyone's story. And <laughs> I honestly think that's a really good point because um, when we talk about the media's treatment of women, um, obviously there was Britney who dared to maybe lose her virginity to Justin. But also <laughs> Justin was the one involved in the whole Janet Jackson boob thing. And it was Janet, yeah, Nipplegate. And it was Janet Jackson who got the downfall from that when he was the one who did the thing. He did the thing. (laughs) So, what, yeah, what are your thoughts on Justin Timberlake? Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, as a person, obviously, I'm like a little sus on him, but he has some bangers. I'm not going to lie. Oh, no, I'm not denying he's talented. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, great music. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan of what he stands for. Because, I mean, I've heard like the interviews where he talks about, these women and especially with Britney like there's that viral clip where he I think he was on like some radio show and they're like did you take Britney's virginity and he's like yeah I did it and he's like being all like bro about it like yeah. oh yeah I fucked that bitch type of thing Ew, um, grim. and the fact that he took what like 10 years or something to finally address the Janet thing and also Britney it's like I yeah, I'm sure over time you reflected and maybe you have a different perspective now, but it took you this long to apologize. I mean, as the landscape changed, as like public opinion changed. Right. Like you weren't going to do anything until people called you out for it. So I do believe that Justin Timberlake was definitely the villain in many pop girls stories. Oh, God. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would love to see a video on that you know no 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 a hint or anything but yeah exactly it's um well actually that's another question I'd say like um (laughs) I'm going back to Mike's mic but I overheard (laughs) just because like he keeps popping up in my head obviously I'm a fan and he was he mentioned in a podcast that um it seems as if like the pop girlies are dominating and that you, you know you're talking about big artists and stuff and that maybe it's like the women's moment at the moment and all the big pop stars seem to be women. Like the only, I mean, again, I'm not a music person, so wrong person to ask, but in terms of like massive pop stars, uh, Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I would say but, Justin but no one likes it. Like Justin Bieber. Pop, male yes. pop star. Yeah. I think I mentioned this briefly in my last video comparing male and female pop stars. And yeah, I mean, women rule pop music. Um, and with male pop singers there's really little to no expectation for them in terms of like performance um quality of music I mean as as long as you're cute and you make a catchy song like you'll be fine essentially um whereas female pop stars you know they're expected to not only look good but sound good and you know I'm heavy on the music TikTok so I see a lot of videos of people picking apart female artists um in their performances live performances like Olivia Rodrigo is getting a lot of shit because she lost breath in her VMA's performance and people say she can't sing live 
and you see this all the time, but I've yet to ever see a video dissecting Harry Styles' vocals in a live performance. Yes. No one cares if he sings flat or sharp or if he's out of breath because the standard for male pop stars is so incredibly low. Yes. And there's not many of them either. I'd say Bruno Mars is probably the best male pop star because he makes great music. He's a great performer. Um, and, he, you know, female pop stars, they have to do that. They have no option but to be like perfect. Yes, exactly. Um, and th- whilst, whilst we're on the topic of TikTok, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the whole TikTok girlies becoming pop stars What's oh. your opinion on it? Do you think it's like... Oh, girl. Yeah, tell us, tell us. Go on, go on. So go actually, on. I covered the D'Amelio uh, sh- on show. On your Patreon, on yes. Patreon. Plug your Patreon. Yes. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Madison Brown if you want to hear me talk <laughs> major shit. You think I'm controversial on YouTube, girl? <laughs> Patreon. That's the great thing about Patreon. You can be more yes. honest. I love it. <laughs> okay, yeah. That shit made me want to pluck my eye my eyelashes out one by one. Oh, don't do that. You have beautiful <laughs> eyelashes. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, mostly I just felt bad for them watching it, but so on the topic of TikTok singers, I personally like am not a fan just cuz like I'm super biased cuz I'm a singer and I've yes. been singing my entire life and I would give anything to have the opportunities that Dixie and Addison have. And you know, I get it. They're just they got super famous out of nowhere. Like they didn't necessarily like choose that life, but I also find it weird how these girls will get famous. Right. And then their management is like, okay, so what are you good at? Like, what do we do with all this fame and all these followers? And I'm like, can't they just be influencers? Like they got famous for doing TikTok dances, not saying that's the only thing that they can do for the rest of their lives, but why push them into something that they don't, know how to do um because like Dixie's voice lesson was documented for the um the show mm. talking about her music career and all this stuff and I'm watching the voice lesson and I'm like actually like floored because she's so bad at singing <laughs> like, really? she's really not a good singer and like I'm not saying that to be mean it's just like for someone with all this power and all these connections it's just really weird to see her working with these industry professionals. Like uh, she did a song with Wiz Khalifa. <laughs> she's a song with Wiz Khalifa. She works with Stevie Mackey, who's like one of the most well-known like vocal coaches in the industry. Wow. La Reed was in the show, and he's talking to her like, you know, we're gonna make music for a long time. I'm like, are you <laughs> serious? Like, La Reed, the biggest music exec in the world essentially like if you've listened to music he probably had something to do with it and I'm just like why are you lying to this girl like you know she's not exceptionally talented but because you know she can make him a bunch of money he's obviously gonna push her as much as possible and you know in terms of business like it's smart of him to do but it's just really sad to see someone who really isn't that good at singing making music that I don't think she's really passionate about like there was a episode where they show her uh writing with the songwriters that she's working with and um you can just tell she's really not into it like she's not a songwriter she's not interested really I don't think and I'm like why (laughs) so that's my stance on it I wish they would just kind of stop but I'm also not going to be like you know you shouldn't you shouldn't do anything like you should just yeah. stick to your dances. Yeah, because I think that was that's some of the discourse around um, you know, he's all that with Addison Ray. Yeah. Um, like, you know, people are critiquing her performance in that. And, you know, whilst I agree, you know, it's unfair that people who train in, in acting for years and years don't get to be in a Netflix movie. On the flip side, I'm also like, if it's not social media people using their clout, it's uh, the other side of it is nepotism. I mean, how many people in the performance industry do you see that don't have half the talent of other people doing well simply because their dad is a producer or some shit? It's just right. like, it's, oh God. I mean, I imagine it's the same in music, but I don't know music very well. Whereas I do have an acting background and honestly, like nepotism in acting is the bread and butter. Mm -hmm. honestly like everyone you watch in any film 
whatever. You might think that they've got there on their own. Trust me, they're related to someone. Oh yeah. Like, I promise you. Like, I think <laughs> so, especially in acting, it's more, way more prevalent because at least in music, there is a bit more agency in terms of like who sees your stuff or like how you make your stuff because with music, like like for me, I'm I'm releasing a single Ooh. very soon. Um, but I'm able to do that because I can record in my bedroom. I can work with producers that I know. Whereas with acting, you need someone to cast you in a movie. Like you Mm -hmm. need other people really to choose you in a way. And so I feel like it's way more likely for nepotism babies to be uh, actors because it's like, you know, if your dad's a producer, director, writer, whatever, that connection is going to get you into the door. Whereas like with music, you can be an independent artist. You can't necessarily be an independent actor. It's not the same. No, no. Unless you want to make your own show, but then you need money to do that and you need crew and you need funding. And well, that's that's another thing I wanted to ask actually, because obviously we're not on the same level as the D'Amelios, but you know, I have an acting background. You have, you're a musician, you're a singer. Do you worry that say one day you're, so you're big on YouTube now, that if you did want to like pursue music more like prop I'm not saying that you aren't properly but you know what I mean like it's be like more full time and to pivot away from YouTube do you have anxieties about that or do you just think Fuck oh it. yeah I think about it yeah. every day because my yeah. plan is to be a full-time musician essentially um that's why I also pivoted towards music because I'm like well I'm gonna be releasing original music and it makes more sense for me to talk about music on YouTube mm-hmm. to supplement my my own music um and yeah I mean I think about it all the time because like what if you know a certain artist say like they want to work with me but I like talk shit about them on YouTube like three years ago or something like that um or if I you know I blow up and then someone looks at one of my videos and they try to cancel me because they're like oh like she said this in a YouTube video and she's so problematic you know so it definitely it scares me a lot and I was actually talking to um my YouTube manager about this she's like well like since you're you know pursuing music uh you can't really criticize other musical artists because it could affect your career in the future I'm like damn (laughs) so like what do I do (laughs) that that is hard that's really yeah I mean and in a way that's kind of you, you end up suppressing your opinions a bit but then I suppose for you, it's a decision of what's more important to me. And if your music's more important to you, then I guess you're willing to make that sacrifice in that yeah. you're just going to limit what you say in your YouTube videos. And that's that's fair enough, you know? Like, yeah. So is that kind of the goal, would you say, the end goal to be like a full-time working musician? Mm-hmm. It's always been that way. I mean, when I first started YouTube, it was just like for fun. And then yeah. it was like, okay, this is actually, I could actually like really put a lot of effort and time into this and build this up to be something much bigger and actually like be a YouTuber. And so once I made that decision to take it seriously and treat it like a job, my goal was always to be like, okay, so this is going to help boost your music career in the future because everyone knows you need to have a following in order to be a musician nowadays, even like same with acting, like anything entertainment wise, you need to have a following built in already a lot of labels aren't going to look at you if you don't already have a fan base. So I always was like, I'm going to do this YouTube thing. And when the time is right, I'm going to release music and then become a full-time musician. Kind of like my framework is like, like Troy Sivan, Conan Gray. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. And they're killing it now. I mean, and it's funny when you look at the fact that they were on YouTube, it just feels really I don't want to say disjointed, but um, as someone, I feel like it's not offensive. I, I can say this because I'm on YouTube, but YouTube people do feel very separate from mainstream entertainment still. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it does feel almost as if like, and I don't know if this is just me, but in a way I feel like almost unworthy of being in like a mainstream thing. Say if I wanted to go back into like voice acting or something, I'd be a bit like, oh gosh would they just be like is that a youtuber I don't know I think it's the word as well the word is cringy youtuber so Mm -hmm. I don't know it's just 
a lot of cringy associations. I think another thing was, um, do you remember a YouTuber called Tanya Burr? She was in like the British vlog squad. Yes, I do. Oh my yeah. God, I haven't heard that name in so long. That's, uh, yeah, old school, like with Zoella gang, that kind of thing. And she yeah. did a play at the Southwark Playhouse in South London. And apparently her acting wasn't too great. And um, the phenomenon is called stunt casting. So that's when you cast yeah. a celebrity in like, like when um Cameron Dallas was in Mean Girls the musical was he right yeah was, you're like what he's not a singer no he's not an actor. no don't do that yeah no that's especially anything that involves singing you cannot compromise on quality especially acting, live singing exactly like, like acting, Broadway is, yeah is um, it's like how um, there's this boy band in the UK that I loved when I was a kid called Busted. And one of the guys from Busted was in Wicked, the musical, and he just could not hold the notes. Yeah. And he w- and it was just such a bummer because it's like, as you know, singing takes for some, you know, it, it can be a lifetime of training. It's, it's yeah. one of those things. It's incredibly, you know, I mean, I have a friend who's actually training in opera and her degree is seven years in total it's like training to be a doctor wow, yeah so opera cool. is some serious shit like yeah. yeah it's a commitment if you decide you want to be an opera singer you've got to train for I don't know if it's the same in the U.S. but in the U.K. it's wow. yeah mm-hmm. so yeah so I, I think in a way it kind of bums me out more with music because I, I feel like it's insulting our intelligence more. Like when you hear a bad singer, you know it's bad, right? And you're just like, mm-hmm. come on. Whereas with acting, you could theoretically be like, well, it's subjective. Oh, it's yeah. a teen movie. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know right. what I mean? Like Addison Ray and he's all that. It was never going to be a masterpiece anyway. Yeah. Whereas like Dixie working with, I don't know the name of that p- person you were meant, I can't remember, but you know who I mean? Like biggest industry people. Yes. That feels insulting, right? Right. That's exactly what I was going to say. Like yeah. seeing L.A. Reid talking to Dixie D'Amelio saying, oh, we're going to make so many records and you have such a great future. I'm like, it's genuinely very insulting to everyone watching this because we we saw the clip of her singing. It wasn't good. But you're like lying to her, lying to the audience. I'm like, you have worked with Mariah Carey. Really? You know what good singing sounds like. <laughs> oh, I don't really understand what you're trying to do here because we're not dumb you don't have to be a singer to know that she's well actually maybe not because I uh do you know Glam Glow or is that her name she makes a uh, commentary video she talks a lot about like influencers and stuff no. she wears makeup is it Glam Glow I feel like uh I'm gonna search it up really quick because I yeah. no I'll check her out um but she was talking about the D'Amelio show um, on her channel. And she was like, Dixie's actually a talent. Oh, Smoky Glow. Glam Glow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know Smoky Glow. Smoky glow. <laughs> um, she was like, Dixie's actually a talented singer. And I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> I understand that you're probably not a singer, but I don't like I know I'm not crazy like she's not like, yeah. well it's funny it's funny you say that because I've only heard like snippets of her singing and I, I I didn't I wasn't blown away but I was like oh it sounds in tune like it sounds good enough to me as someone who doesn't sing I was a bit like oh that sounds good enough to me but not exactly a uh, superstar um so yeah. I guess if you if you aren't very musically you know what I mean and I'm just sure as someone who does sing and has friends who sing you've probably heard you know you know and you're a very good singer as well so like it's not like she's singing out of tune all the time or that it's just like ouch 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 stop but it's also like you know obviously like pop stars and vocalists are two different forms of entertainment like true yeah I don't think a pop star necessarily is like a singer singer vocalist no No. Um, yeah I mean if you're not or if you're like um uh what's the word like a front person of I don't know, like an indie band. You don't need to be like an incredible vocalist who can rock ballads. You know what I mean? You've just got to, some of it is stylistic as well. Actually, there was that thing. I don't know if this is um, fact or fiction, so please correct me. But there was that whole thing about Britney, apparently the baby thing not being her real voice, or is that a myth? No, it's true. 
if you look at videos of her when she was singing as a kid she had a very like hearty very soulful uh voice and then once like she was singing like oh kind of way yeah oh baby baby like it's completely different um right which is kind of scary because like you know in singing they always say like just sing what comes naturally to you if you try to sing in a different style or in a different way and you're forcing your voice to do something else that's going to damage your voice and I'm pretty sure it did damage your voice um I'm not 100% like I mean even doing an impression of Britney for a couple of minutes hurts my throat after <laughs> yeah you know I mean? it's like because it's the baby voice you're like stretching those yeah. I don't know the words but you know what I mean like yeah you're, you're, you're yeah, no, it can't be good for you. Yeah, oh, God, that is all so sad. Like, fucking hell, justice for Britney, you know what I'm saying? I like, know. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. Um, And I still think even to this day, we're still not treating our pop girlies well. You know what I mean? We're still dicks to them. Like, I don't know. Actually, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts because she's a very polarizing character. What are you, what is your take on Taylor Swift? I actually, I used to be a huge Swifty back in the day. Like Mm. when I was, I want to say like 10 or something Mm. around that age. Mm. I remember I was at my friend's house and she put on the Fearless album Mm. and we're like playing Barbies listening to Taylor Swift. And I'm like, this shit goes hard. Like, (laughs) amazing. (laughs) And I remember going home that day and looking up like all of her music videos and just like obsessively watching them. And um, she had this fearless documentary, docu-series on Netflix. Right. And I watched that thing at least once a week for, like, months. On oh, end. wow. You were I Swifty. Was, I was so taken aback by her. I was like, wow, like, she had a dream and she went to the <laughs> and made it happen. And she writes her own songs. And after that, I, I picked up a guitar and started learning how to play guitar and writing my own songs because I was like, well, I want to be like Taylor Swift. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, she like really influenced me as a very young baby artist to write my own songs and learn guitar. So I'm, I'm a fan. Um, I kind of fell off her music in high school just because like I was into other kinds of music by that point. Also, the media was treating her very badly at that time. So I think I also kind of fell into that. Like, oh, of course. Yeah. Like, oh, Taylor's a snake and blah, blah, blah. So yeah. I was kind of like, eh, I don't claim Taylor anymore, which is mm. sad. But, you know, yeah, I like Taylor Swift. I think her music is really great. She's a very talented storyteller because that's really what I think drew me to her was her storytelling ability. Yes, absolutely. She's one of those singers where she's like, she's not necessarily a vocalist. Like, I'm not listening to her music for her crazy vocals. I'm listening for the stories that she has to tell. Yeah, no, exactly. Um yeah, no, if I I am I'm definitely a Swifty. I, I think uh, to be honest, I'm a fan of all the pop girlies. Like uh, <laughs> I call them the pop girlies, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, like, uh, when's the next Rihanna album gonna be? Or Rihanna? Never. Sorry, <laughs> um, never. Yeah, she's just gonna deprive us of it. Actually, yeah. that reminds me. I would love to hear your thoughts on. And I know this is going a bit back to social commentary, but no your problem. thoughts on whether. It, uh, you can separate art from the artist. So people uh, were disappointed. Rihanna's statement on the whole Israel-Palestine thing didn't satisfy people. Does that matter to you as someone consuming music? Not really, honestly. Like, I'm not looking to pop stars to speak on political issues. Like, that just, it's like asking a doctor, like, how to do your makeup. Like, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I'm not no, that's really fair. concerned. I mean, it obviously depends on the matter. Like, let's say, like, let's say, like, I'm a huge fan of Justin Bieber, and he's like, "Hey, uh, I'm anti-Black Lives Matter." I'd be like, "Okay, well, <laughs> I don't no. know about that." But um, no, I mean, I think it's nice if your artists are aligned with your personal beliefs, but I, I don't put too much weight into it unless they've done something that's like really like illegal or like messed right. up. Um, and I also think it's a lot easier to be like, oh, you shouldn't support this artist if you don't listen to them. Like for example, 6 9 is a terrible person. I also don't yes. listen to 6 9 so I'm not like battling between like, should I give him my stream and yeah. support him? 
or should I like stand my moral grounds and just like stay away from his music? But it's like I can I can be like, yeah, fuck six nine, he sucks because I don't listen to his music. Yeah, I suppose it would be a harder thing to grapple with if you did genuinely love someone's music and then something came out about them yeah. and you're a bit. I don't know. For example, I don't know. Like R. Kelly is you know a phenomenally a uh, uh, talented person, but some really fucking dark shit has come out about him yeah. um and i imagine for a lot of his fans that's been really difficult to contend with you know as someone you know so and lots of people there's so many examples i mean yeah that that's just one in many but like i think kanye is a polarizing person oh yeah he is isn't he like he's definitely got his own thing going on but i still listen to his music <laughs> yeah no, and that's the thing. Most of my friends have similar politics to me, so like leftist, progressive, but they'll still listen to Kanye, even though <laughs> he's he's uh, you know had some moments that yeah <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, exactly. I mean, I I think this in general, and I think especially with influencers, because I understand an influencer's job is to influence, but just because you're an influencer doesn't mean you can influence on geopolitics. Doesn't mm-hmm. mean that you I'd rather you not speak on something than to spread misinformation right you know what I mean because out of pressure yes. you've been told you need to speak on this issue and then you say something silly and then you you know what I mean I don't know just like I saw that a lot during the whole um obviously Israel Palestine has been going on for years and years and I've always had my opinions on that and stuff and you know viva la Palestine but like at the same time, if there's an influencer who's never heard of this thing and never learned about it in school, I'm not going to expect them to speak on it tomorrow. I think that's just really it's reckless. It's, yeah. I think it's irresponsible, but but the audience demands it. We're in, a, yeah. I think, a climate where everyone's expected to speak quickly on things, and I just don't think it's healthy, basically. Yeah, it's really not. No, it's really not. So, yeah, but oh, musicians, eh? and influencers and sometimes they're both um but I will say going back to like what I was saying about TikTok musicians even though it's frustrating to see as someone who I guess does fit into that kind of influencer umbrella but it gives me hope for myself because I'm like well I have a bit of followers I'm actually good at what I do in terms of music so I think I'll be okay yeah (laughs) well exactly and I think you know, you've been doing it anyway. See, there's a difference between being a musician who made YouTube videos, then you go on to make music after, than being someone who's never even, you know, touched a microphone in their life, right. becomes famous as an influencer. And they're like, okay, well, what do we, as you say, it's like, how are we going to capitalize off this fame? Right. Okay, we'll make a perfume, make a clothing line, and we'll release a single. It's just a bit, yeah. like, ooh, I don't know. Yeah. It's gross. It's kind of gross. I don't know. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people, um, like when Bella Porch made her song, they're like, oh, another influencer making a song. And I, I thought to myself, like, well, people think that about me, like, oh, another YouTuber making a song. But I'm like, I've, like, I've set up my musical journey, I guess, from the start. Like, I have a second channel dedicated to music. I talk about music. I sing in my video sometimes. So, like, if anyone were to say that, it would be like, well... It's not the same. I've been doing music forever, so I'm I'm sure like maybe someone will say that, but I don't think. Of course, always. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's um, yeah. You if you know in your heart that it's what you're passionate about and what you yeah. So what kind of music do you make? Do you want to tell the people about your music? Your yeah. yeah. Um. So I kind of am pulling from a bunch of different genres, but. I really am focusing on like pop R&B with a bit of like rap hip hop influence and also drill just because I love all of those genres and I've yet to really hear anyone do that. Like Ariana Grande kind of has that like pop trap hip hop thing going on, but I really want to do something that sounds like, like I, I played my song for a friend the other day and he's like, you know, I've never heard that kind of beat match with those kinds of vocals and that's really what I'm going for is like Hmm. kind of like making music that a rapper would make but making it like pop vocalist 
Okay. Yeah. Oh, exciting. Yeah. I'm excited for your single. Um, I know nothing about singing, so tell me, are you a soprano, a mezzo? What are you? What is your voice? Yeah, I'm a mezzo, I would say. Okay. Mm. How, how, who decides that? uh yeah that's a good question um because in high school I sang alto and choir and same with like whenever I would do a musical I would sing the alto part typically um but back then I really didn't have like a proper understanding of my range and um as I got older and as I started doing voice lessons um I realized I'm actually a mezzo soprano um, I also think I've just like trained my voice to sing in a higher register because uh, I'm a lot more comfortable doing it now because like before I thought like oh I can't hit those notes so I'm not even gonna try but I was like oh wait actually I can hit those notes and I feel way more comfortable in this range um, so yeah uh, I guess the person who decides is either like your choir teacher if you're in high school and you're doing that kind of thing or like your vocal coach because my vocal coach really like pushed me to like find my voice and really lean into like my strengths as a singer and she was the one who was like girl you're a mezzo soprano I was like okay yeah you're right (laughs) oh I love that that's well that's kind of fun that yeah you found your confidence in up in your range I love that that's yeah and I suppose also your voice uh probably changes as you get older as well like yeah or you that might change again you know because I, I, not to the same extent, but our voices do break when we hit puberty, regardless of gender. Um, so, you know, stuff. Yeah. Voices are funny, aren't they? Voices. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, the way that I speak, I speak in a pretty low register, but yeah. I sing a lot higher than my speaking voice. Yeah. wonder why that is. Hmm. Huh. Funny that. But yeah anyway this has been delightful do you want to tell the people where they can find you yeah you can find me on youtube madison brown spelled m-a-d-i-s-y-n just to be clear (laughs) um and same on instagram madison brown um and yeah i think that's it yeah yeah don't bother following the tiktok because you're avoiding it (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) exactly um okay beautiful what do you want to do the bye-bye bye-bye now um to your laptop or computer or whatever you're on. Goodbye.